Florida at the moment, causing a rattle problem in Florida. So we're actually eating alligators. And these animals are a beautiful animal. Don't get me wrong when I say this, but they don't make good pets. For a simple reason is because they get too big. Prime example, I was called in to rescue a 15-foot Burmese python about two years ago. A chap had her for 15 years. He was feeding his spots, he bit all of him. Okay? The Burmese python bit all of him. There was only a feeding response. The guy was this big, little tiny bloke. Honestly, he, he did really well to get it off and survive. Trust me, these animals, these animals in the wrong hands are very, very dangerous. You don't make good pets. They really don't because they get too big. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. I don't walk around crocodile jaws wild world these, with these around my neck because the animal of this size would easily, easily kill a man of my size. And I think I'm a pretty strong, tough kind of fella. But I've got nothing compared to this animal. If she wanted to kill me right now, she could. Okay, it's quicker than a cobra. Quicker than a cobra. I'd like to see, I would like to see some kind of licensing for these animals. And trust me, within about 10 years time, 10 years time you're gonna see a different animal. Honestly, because I've just rescued 25 reticulated migrants from a two up, two down house. Children living next door, either side, okay? These reticulated pythons and Burmese pythons, when they get too big, they don't start handling. When they get 50 kilos, honestly, they become wild again. Now, when you get a snake with a head the size of my two fists, you don't want to go near it, ever. Honestly, you don't want to go near it. You really, really don't. I got bit the other week, I got, well, it's about a month ago now, went right down to the bone. Massive big snake, really, honestly. I was, I mean, it's 20 foot plus, 20 foot plus reticulated python. Now, Burmese pythons are beautiful animals. They're gorgeous, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, but I do believe these animals should be in the zoo and not somebody's street. But honestly, if you do have it, then let's be responsible. Let's get a microchip, all mine are microchips, just like your microchip, your cat and your dog. You know, if, and I'd like to see some kind of registration going into these animals, for sure. Because an animal of this size would easily eat a fully grown Staffordshire Bull Terrier. No problem. No problem at all. They have big heads, don't they? So if they can eat a fully grown Staffordshire Bull Terrier, they could easily eat a child, for sure. Definitely. Definitely. Would you feel safe with one of these living next door to you? Would you feel safe? Well, I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't, because these animals are quite capable of breaking the glass, you know, and getting out. But if you're leaving your window open in the summertime, it crawls into your house, it's only a matter of time, so something really, really bad happens. It really is. In about five or ten years' time, trust me, trust me, I think we're about five or ten years now in America, and I think the animals, Burmese, kill about eight people every year. This is a tiny one, folks. This is just one one of them that I bring on my shoulders. Okay, I've got roughly about, I think there's about 50 of these animals, about 50 of them at the moment. Because I'm absolutely inundated with large reptiles.